Hey guys, it's Lee from Axe UK. I'm here at the South by Gear Expo 2016 and I'm with Jeff with, uh, from the Les Paul Big Sound Experience and he's going to take us through what's going on inside. How are you doing? Great, I'm doing great. How are you doing? Very well, thank good, you. Good to see you. Glad you stopped by. Thanks for giving me the time. Absolutely, no problem. Come on in. You want to check it out? So basically, this is put on by the Les Paul Foundation. And as you see here, our mission statement is to inspire innovative and creative thinking. That's the whole purpose of this, because the byproduct of that thinking and creativity was the solid body electric guitar, multi-track recording, all those things. But this is, this is the word we want to get out, because a lot of people say, who is Les Paul? Or they say, oh, the guitar. They don't even know he's a human being. That's Unbelievable. Like, well, there's a, yeah, so that's why we're doing this. It's not like a Michael Jackson or Elvis Presley thing with memorabilia. It's a story. It's about how he got started in life, how his mother let him do all these great things. and. We have a lot of interactive things here, so you can get immersed in it. You can have pictures with Les sent to your phone. You can have mixes of songs with Les that you can send to your phone. So I'll give you a quick little walkthrough. Awesome. So, so we start here with Les as a, it's not really a linear exhibit. Les didn't do things in a linear way. So <laughs> linear was not in his vocabulary. So I said, we can't really have this be like follow the yellow brick road. It should be sort of all over the place. But this is about him as a kid and where his inspirations were with local talent, as well as making his first wireless radio. Uh, so he was really into electronics and music as a kid. He had a little jug band when he was a, a kid at 13, wore a wig and had a harmonica holder. This was his first professional picture ever taken, and actually it shows a harmonica holder which he invented, which allowed him to change the tune of the harmonica by hitting it with his chin, wow. so it would rotate. There was no such thing at the time. Genius. So this talks about him as, as a kid. We also then go into this section here, the living room lab. And the story here is really, his mom let him get away with murder. He would break the player piano and then put it back together again and hit pots and pans and do all kinds of crazy things in his house. But her mother, his mother let him do it because she saw he'd be able to put these things back together again. So they had an old player piano and he used to do all kinds of crazy things with the player piano. If you're familiar with a player piano, it's basically paper with holes punched in. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So the piano plays a song. So he would punch other holes in the piano and his mother would be waiting to hear whatever the hit of the day was on the player piano and then he'd tape over the holes so it would all play all different things and it drove his mother crazy but he would get it back to normal would be the bottom line. The funny thing about here, the interesting thing about this is he said to me once, he said, you know, a player piano is actually the first piece of digital equipment. I said, what are you talking about? How's a player piano digital? He said, well, when I was a kid, I would slow the player piano down and the notes didn't change in tone. But when I put my hand on the Victroller, on the record, it would mm. slow down. He said, I don't know what that meant as a kid, but he said, I knew there was a difference between the player piano, would stay in tune no matter how slow I played it, but the record would go down. I said, you know, that's pretty amazing. The first digital player is a player piano. Um, this section here, pretty critical in its own way. It's all about persistence. Les didn't take no for an answer. I mean, he was in a, almost a full body cast for a year and a half after he made his first hit song, Lover. Uh, this talks about how he ran into Bing Crosby when he was in the studio. He knew Bing used to go in this little room for a smoke every once in a while. So he brought the trio into that studio where Bing had a smoke. And he said, I know somebody's going to come in here, but just keep playing. Bing came in, went to light the cigarette. He said, oh, guys, I'm sorry. And who are you? He said, well, we're the Les Paul Trio. Not long after, they had a number one hit record together wow. with Bing. And then, of course, the Gibson story. Gibson told them no for 10 years. They didn't need a solid body electric guitar. Get that, get that crazy guy with the broomstick and the pickups out of here. We don't need it. And then Fender came out. They said, get that guy back in here with the broomstick and the pickups. We want to do it. And then in 52, 10 years later, yep. they came out with the gold top. The yeah. section over here just talks about, <laughs> if you look at this stack of records, it took him 500 discs to make his first hit song, Lover. And it's a long involved story, but the basic premise is, he would cut into a, an acetate disc and put one guitar part on. Once he finally got it right, which might take five or ten discs, he'd say, okay, I got that one part. He would then lay that disc over here and then record onto a second disc while he was playing along with it. So that became over, you know, multi-track multi -track recording. Yeah, yeah. But it took him 500 discs to get all X amount of tracks done to hit the, get the song Lover recorded. Wow. So what we do here is we have a touch screen that people can, we call it What's Your New Sound, so you can hit add a voice. Big sound. Experience. And you can make it high pitched, low pitched. Life pause. Big sound. Experience. And then you can add different instruments. Less small. Big sound. Experience. 
So it adds all these special effects. Less Paul. Then you can add, of course, more cowbell. Less Paul. And it records everything I just did. After it recycles, it asks for your email address. You punch it in your phone and it sends it to your telephone. So we allow them to do their new sound, like Les started with all his new sounds. Brilliant. Sorry to turn you around here. Les, as you know, was really into technology. And he'd come up with this gadget called the pulverizer because when he would do his recordings, it was he and Mary Ford, you know, overdubbing, overdubbing, multi-tracking. So when he played live, he had to come up a way, instead of it was just the two of them on stage, yeah. you know, one guitar and two voices. So he came up with this control, and I won't get into the specifics of it, but <laughs> this is a visual you may want to tighten up on at some point because instead of just having a pedal, which made all the things loop and multi-track and whatever, and record what he was playing live all at the same time, he had these reel-to-reel -reel decks backstage, so this little switch was controlling what all those decks would do. Yeah, <laughs> imagine the margin of error, whatever. So uh, <laughs> that was running backstage while he and Mary were up front, so that tells a little bit about that. This again is all of his recording wizardry. This deck right here is a reel-to-reel -reel that Bing Crosby gave him, and uh, he went from the acetates to going to tape here, and tape had just come out. But he couldn't do his sound on sound recording, so he said, that's great, I can use tape, but he said, I need to do my multi-tracking. So he, he added a playback head, he called Ampex, just drilled right into the machine, and there he was, he was able to go from playback to record and do all of his layering on this machine, and this is the machine they used for most of their uh, hits. It was given to him by Bing Crosby, and they made most of their number one hits on that. Of course, he then had the 8-track Octopus and all the other technology. Screens here talk about different sound effects that he came up with, uh, echo, reverb, phase shifting, were all things and sounds that he, he heard but he didn't know how to recreate them. And he came up with the technology and how to do it. So This is all about multi-track recording. I was telling you before, this sort of just walks you through the whole experience. We have a listening station because obviously Les Paul and Mary Ford, and even before Mary Ford, Les was a great jazz player, as you may or may not know. Yep. He also was a country western star. He used to play country western in the morning on his local radio really? station and go out and jam with the jazz cats late at night and uh, made a ton of money as a country western player and not a hell of a lot as a jazz artist, <laughs> but, but loved to be playing jazz. So everybody seems to enjoy listening to the music. This talks about the history of the solid body electric guitar. And just a very quick overview, he started with a piece of railroad track, literally a piece of railroad track, took the phone piece from a telephone so that you could hear it, and basically you can hear the sound that was created from that. He went from there to the log, the log which is second guitar, and basically the log was very similar to that, you'll see. He took a piece of wood with the pickups on it. And he actually used to play this in clubs and people didn't really appreciate the music. That's they were the so distracted. That's the design he took to Gibson, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So he had that, but when he was playing in the clubs, the people didn't really listen to the music because they were so distracted by this. <laughs> so he went to Epiphone, just put on these pieces. You can see how they just are bolted. Served no purpose other than the look. And he said, you know, people listen with their eyes. So, you know, it's pretty true. You see something like that. His next version of the guitar was the clunker. He had three of these and he loved it because he could go into the back and he could work the mechanics uh, and get to the inside of the guitar. He was always experimenting with sound, as you know. So he'd get one of these set to the way he liked it and then experiment with the other two, but always had that third one with the sound he liked. So he could keep messing around with these and knocking them apart and rebuilding them. Then he went, obviously, to the final 52 gold top where Gibson said, yep, we got a hit on our hands here. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, so. I think they sold a few of these over the years. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, this is a wall about less. We call it Who Knew? Because things like people from NASA said with his multi track recording, we figured out a better way to store data. You know, IBM, uh, where is it? Is there some? IBM, some of the executives there were telling us some things in advance in technology that Les helped them with. Uh, and my favorite thing here is that. Capitol Records still to this day and probably this day right now records in the echo chambers that Les built at Capitol Records back in the 50s and they still use them now. Yeah? Yeah. This is actually a very cool thing. It's called um, uh, mixing it up and basically what this is, it's just processing right now. We found original acetates of some of the stems that Les recorded when he recorded the song Brazil and I used to ask him, I say, Les, all those multi-track recordings, you must have just one or two guitar parts. And he said, nah, I threw all of that out. 
I said, that's priceless. <laughs> Any kid to be able to listen to just two of your guitar parts, you know, as you know, pulled out of the mix? No, I don't have it. Well, when he passed, they went through the house, they found some old acetates. And this actually takes you inside his studio. We have pictures and we have a docent here on the screen who walks you through and basically we have a couple of stems from the original recording of Brazil that you can add rhythm guitar, bass and drums, you can add phase shifting, echo, special effects, do the final mix and it'll send it right to your telephone. That's really cool. Yeah. People who know less in the music part of it and the recording, as you can imagine, NAM and things like that, this thing gets just booked because people are like, I can actually mix a song with Les Paul. It's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. <laughs> Is just getting a picture with Les. Oh no no, you get so you get to just pick Les as a young man, a middle-aged man, or in his 90s there, and get a picture. And it'll, again, it'll put in your email address and it sends it right to your phone, so people can leave. You're actually getting a picture with Les before they leave. So uh, that's it. I mean, it's the journey through his life, and and again, the mission is to inspire innovative and creative thinking. You know, with all these different byproducts, but we want kids and adults alike to say, "Wow." I can't believe what this guy was able to accomplish, you know. Yeah. Maybe I'll take the next step to fixing that thing or doing that thing I never did before because when they realize how he said no to every, never took no as an answer and came up with all this technology, you know, people can do it as well. I don't care if they're tone deaf. It doesn't have to be musically inclined. If that's the message we want to get out. Brilliant. Where can people go to find out more information? Just go to uh, www.lespaulfoundation.org. It'll talk all about Les's life. There's educational programs on the site as well as the tour schedule of where uh, Les Paul's big sound experience is going to be from now through uh, June of this year. And where are you heading next? We're going to be in Nashville at one of the middle schools there, uh, high school. Uh, and then after that, we're going to, uh, you know what, I'm forgetting. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no worries, I'm no blanking. worries. I only know where I am right now, but we're going to be hitting some more college campuses, a couple of states. I'll put players. a link in the description yeah. below. Go, go to the link. It'll give you the, the calendar. It'll show you all the past events we have. We have video and pictures and stuff, but it'll tell you all the upcoming events. The link is tour on the very top. You can click on that. It'll tell you everywhere we're going to be, when we're going to be there. Okay, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for coming by. Cheers. Thank you. Right. Celine from Ask Island UK signing off.